Welcome back to day 41 to 43 of my Dreams RPG series. In this devlog, I'll be going over the recreation of the mount. Recreation because I've actually already made it in my previous RPG version. I've decided to make the mount purely movement focused. Here's why. RPG V2 had a mount and I tried to make the mount do everything and it was cool. <laughs> it was very cool. The idea was it would be its own separate thing. It would be its own separate entity. You could leave it places and it would just stay there. It had levels. You could level it up. It had experience. It had health. It had an attack. Um, it had AI. It has AI. How do I get off this? What the hell? Okay. It, it does its own thing. This, this is so freaking cool, but it's so beyond the scope of this game. I started the first day off with sculpting. I wanted to go with my older design, but lower poly. In hindsight, I really should have just taken a picture of the older design when I was, and then used it to sculpt this new version, but I decided to go from memory, which always goes really well. It's basically an ostrich though, so it wasn't that hard to get the basic shape down. Uh, and it's also important to note that this is just a gray boxed version. Ghost Route 64, one of my teammates um, on this project, will handle making it actually look good. So technically the only thing that's being finalized right now is the joint locations. Everything else can and hopefully will be changed. I'd like to make the mount and most other creatures in this game unlike any creature that exists in real life. So I was thinking the neck could, the neck and head could be like reptile-like or, or something like that. I'm not really sure yet though. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. Anyway, here is the final result. Cool, all right, I'm done. I'm done, I'm calling it here, I'm done. Next up was the rigging. I have to use joints for the neck and bolts for the legs. Typically rigging is pretty easy and goes quite smoothly, but I had a couple of issues this time with the legs not being live cloned, uh, forcing me to re-rig them multiple times, which was pretty annoying. I swear I was live cloning it, but I, I guess not. Uh, anyway, here's how it turned out. On to the animations. There were two main ones that I wanted to finish, the idle and the walking. I always start with the idle animation since it's the easiest. It was slightly tricky deciding how much head movement I wanted, but I think it turned out pretty well. It's good for now. The walking animation was a bit harder. The leg movement was simple enough, but the head and body movement was a bit confusing. I ended up using a Velociraptor run cycle YouTube video as a reference, and that did help a bit. I also had trouble making the animation loop smoothly. The solution was to place additional keyframes outside of the start and end points and end the animation slightly before the last keyframe. So did I get it? We got it. We got it. All right. I ended the day by making it move. The task itself is extremely easy. The tricky part is matching the animation to the move speed. The higher the move speed, the stronger and faster the walk animation, and vice versa. To do this, I figured out the max and min move speed, min being zero, obviously, and max was like 15. Using this range and a speed sensor to get the current speed, I was able to change the speed of the animation, depending on the move speed, as well as change the strength of the animation, depending on the, depending on the move speed. The former was done with a timer set to speed, hooked into the timer's play, timeline's playhead. Um, a speed timer, basically, the higher the value that's put into it, the faster the timer plays. So the faster the playhead would move. And uh, the latter, the strength of the animation, was done by converting the speed to a value from zero to one, then using that value to power the timeline. The combination of these two things made the animation look and feel amazing. That's pretty good. The goal for the second day was to make summoning and recalling the mount actually work. To start, I needed a mounted state. In the game, I have a state machine for the player to separate out the different things the player can do. 
For example, there's a combat state where the player can only do combat related things, an inventory state where you can only do inventory related things, a default state where, well, where you do normal things like walking and stuff, etc. In the mounted state, the mount you have equipped gets summoned. The character teleports to the mount and the player loses all control of the character and gains control of the mount. So that's what happens in the mounted state. Um, the demo that I just finished isn't flashy, but it's a very important first step, which is entering and exiting the mounted state. So we're in default state. We press L3. Okay, we're in the mounted state. We press L3 again, and we're back to the default state. Now that I know when the mount should be summoned or not, I needed to make the summon and recall system in animation. The system was pretty straightforward. The idea was to play the summon animation and at the end of it, turn on the mount's movement logic. Then when recalled, it would play the summon animation in reverse. I would eventually change it so that the summon and recall animations were on separate timelines. So they were like different, but this was a very easy first step. As for the actual animation, I just made it grow and shrink. Uh, <laughs> it works. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's actually that's actually kind of cool. The obvious next step was to make the player actually teleport to the mount while the mount is summoned. I do this by placing a tag on the mount, specifically the like body of the mount, um, and a teleporter on the player that turns on when the mount is summoned, which teleports to the tag. Now the player actually rides the mount but I think we're still missing something. <laughs> we did it, yay! <laughs> so of course I still needed to animate the player, specifically when they were riding the mount, uh, as opposed to some weird typos thing. I really wanted to make the player grab the mount's neck while riding, but I decided not to because I wouldn't be able to properly make the hands like follow the neck. The neck would move and the hands would kind of like slide in a weird way. I wonder if I could have teleported the hands to the neck, but who knows. This is what that attempt ended up looking like. I never did get the hands to follow the neck properly. Because of this, I decided to go with pretty much the exact sitting animation I went with in RPG V2. And here's what that looks like. What did I do? Um, I'm not sure what I expected with the springiness of the legs. I, I guess I was hoping it would move a little bit. The animation isn't done yet though. It's not even close. A single keyframe on while teleporting the player to the mount, which is what I was doing there, left it feeling extremely stiff. I wanted the legs, head, and body of the player to move as the mount moved. The tricky part was to make these animations scale with the mount's speed. Since the mount's timeline already did this, all I did was create the new animations within the mount's timeline. Then I decided that was a really bad idea. Uh, since if I ever needed to replace the mount in the scene, the animations would just be completely lost. Since I'm creating the animations in the scene as opposed to the mount's element, but I can't create the animations in the mount's element because the player isn't there. I ended up creating a new timeline that had its power and playhead copying the mount's timeline. This, although a bit more complicated, worked perfectly and is a much safer solution. Here is what the legs animation looks like. And the head animation. And finally, the body animation. I was thinking like he would jump up and then it would kind of appear under him. Couldn't have said it any better myself. To finish off the second day, I finished the final two animations, the mount and dismount animations. Starting with the mount animation, 
I got a decent start. I animated the movements and I used a teleporter that eased in to change the position of the player. <laughs> That's actually... <laughs> Oh, it plays it in reverse, too. Oh, man. It was a good start, sort of. Uh, I clearly needed to fix the teleporter and everything related to it to get the mount to spawn in the right place and get the player to hop up at a good-looking distance. After a bunch of tweaking, I think it turned out pretty cool. That's cool. Now that all of the like the positional stuff is figured out, I just needed to tweak the actual speed of the animation um, because the animation was a little too slow, among a couple of other things. After speeding up the mounting and dismounting animations and even more tweaking, I finally finished uh, the animations. So here is what it ended up looking like. I think it was a great way to end day two of working on the mount. I start the final day off fixing a huge bug with quick slots. There was a bug where if you were in the middle of an animation and then changed weapons using quick slots, so the, the left, right, up or down D-pad, the animation would be paused. When using quick slots to go back to the paused, um, to the weapon with the paused animation, it would resume the animation. What's supposed to happen when using quick slots during an animation is the animation should just reset. So when you go back to it, it starts, nothing happens. This bug caused further issues with the mount because if you used quick slots while being mounted and swapped to a weapon that was in a paused animation, it would play the animation and kick you out of the mount because you're in combat. And if you're in combat, you can't be mounted. You are supposed to be able to freely use quick slots while mounted. I'm really glad I finally fixed this bug. And now we're first person. All right. <laughs> oh, this is like actually kind of cool. <laughs> we're Skyrim now. All right. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> what is happening? That's actually great. Ow! Oh my god! It's like a whole nother game. Oh, oh, that's terrifying. After I finished goofing off in first person mode, I worked on some quality of life stuff. Basically, what happens when you're mounted and you try to pick up an item or interact with a crafting table or open the inventory? By making some simple additions to the state machine, I was able to handle all of these different cases. When trying to pick up an item, it will dismount, then pick up the item. When trying to go into the inventory, it will dismount, then open the inventory. When interacting, you guessed it, it'll dismount first. I decided to do it this way because I want the mount to be for movement only. So if you want to do other stuff, you need the dismount. Also, it probably would uh, prevent some bugs in the future. With that finally out of the way, I could get into how the player actually gets the mount. Basically, the mount is bound to an amulet, and if you're wearing the amulet, you can summon and recall the mount with L3. So, I start with sculpting the amulet. The first take was okay, but it looked literally horrible when on the player. Of course, I could have a separate sculpt for what is on the player, but I'd rather just save the thermo and use one sculpt. Here's attempt number two. I was getting kind of annoyed, so I just deleted the top half but this actually ended up leading to what I would eventually use. It made me realize I didn't need to make it a loop. I just needed to make the two ends bend back a bit. Using the curve tool, I was able to get the shape I wanted, kinda. Keep in mind this is just a placeholder item, so it will be low poly eventually, um, and it will look better, hopefully. I am really happy with how this turned out though. Now that I think about it, it probably won't even be visible if you're wearing armor, but there's not really anything I can do about that. Next, I wanted to make the amulet actually do something. <laughs> right now, it's just an item that does nothing. So 
I needed to make it so that you could only summon the mount if the amulet was equipped. This was easily done by just checking the ID of whatever is in the equipment slot. The amulet happened to be ID 22. So if ID 22 was in that slot, you're allowed to summon and recall the mount. Hopefully I set this up in a way that I can easily add more mounts into the, in the future. And as you can see, it works. Next, I started to animate the teleporter that put the mount back to its recalled position so that it would travel on sort of a curve when being recalled. It's not perfect, but I'd rather not put a half hour more into something so small. Then I added a trail using the sword trail technique um, that I have a tutorial on actually, as well as some glow. And I also made the, the path like longer. And at this point it was really starting to come together. I did feel like there needed to be a little more juice for when the mount enters the amulet. So I made a splash like animation. Strokes and dreams are so powerful. You can make pretty much any effect you can think of with them. I'm not amazing with them, but I, I do know my way around them pretty well. And I, I was able to make a really nice effect. Now it's pretty important for the effect to emit at the correct time as well as the correct place. Uh, but it was more than just emitting it at the amulet. If I did that, it would emit, but if the player moved, the effect would still be where it emitted. It needed to emit as part of the player's group. So the effect moved with the player. It looked really bad when it didn't. To do this, the effect template had to be grouped with the player. And with that, we're actually done with the animations for now. I think it turned out really well. Finally, the sounds. I wanted a whooshing sound for when the mount was recalling, a magical sound for summoning, a magical pop kind of sound for when the splash effect played, and some footsteps for the mount's walk animation. Unfortunately, the downloaded video for the third day didn't have sound for some reason, so I recorded some shiny new footage just for you guys. Here it is. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. This project is coming along so well. If you want to watch me make it live and potentially affect the game's development, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss when I go live. Also, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who is a member of the channel. I really appreciate your support. It helps so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.